much for coming to Brian's talk. Um, I also wanted to thank Fred Johnson, Tim Conwell, and Carl Carrington for their amazing musical output today. <laughs> For those of you who may not know Brian's background, which I think most of you probably do, um, Brian Jones started his career as a journalist photographer after graduating from Howard University. He became the supervisor of photography for Howard University's Moreland Spring Garden Research Center and later a professor and photography program coordinator at Maryland's Montgomery College. His diverse projects have included Portraits of Life, The Holocaust Survivors of Montgomery County, DC's Connecticut Avenue, The Black Churches Project, A Survey of Afrocentric Historic Sites, and Maryland Farmers and Musicians, as well as Commercial Assignments. <laughs> Brian's work is collected privately and by the Smithsonian American Art Museum, the New York Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture, the Alvin O. Kuhn Collection at UMBC, and Colgate University. He is currently an adjunct professor in liberal arts at Ringling College of Art and Design. I have had the pleasure to work with Brian over the past year in developing this show and seeing his amazing process. This special body of work sheds light on the many personalities of Sarasota and forces us to question our perceptions of the city. Brian's work is highly conceptual and technically brilliant. As mentioned in his artist statement, Brian is a child of light. And you can see his fascination with and his expertise in using light in creating these highly layered photographs. It is a true honor to introduce Brian Jones to you tonight, who will be telling you all about his journey in finding home in Sarasota. Thank you. All right, well, here we are. Um, first of all, I have to start. Thank, I want to give praise and thanks to the universe, you know, to the creator. That's, that's how we got here, and that's really important to me. Um, Art Center Sarasota has been very kind, which I deeply appreciate to be here, to have this opportunity. Christina was um, absolutely brilliant in helping me sort this out. We worked this out together. I was the director of exhibitions. She has the final say. And you need somebody to help you do that and to make decisions. Um, so thank you so much for that. Um, I, I, I have to say that, that uh, I'm absolutely honored that you guys are here. There are some people here that, that for me are really important. Guy is here. Uh, we go back over 40 years. We studied together. Uh, and we go back to the beginning. Christine, Christina mentioned uh, Fred and Carl, Carl Carrington, Frederick Johnson. Carl is an amazing flutist. He's come down from Washington uh, with his wife, which I deeply appreciate. His wife was very kind to me for many years to let me come to her house and study with her husband. Fred Johnson, if you know anything about this area, Fred Johnson is a phenomenal artist, a musician, a painter, and their presence here is really important to me. And most of the yeah. Let me say something, we, you know, let me just say this, because I think it's really important to place credit where credit is due. I'm a really lucky man. I think I'm probably the luckiest man on earth. Uh, I could not be standing here. These images could not be on the wall. Nothing in my life would be possible without my wife. We, 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 we have just gone through an incredible personal family journey. Uh, it has been unbelievable, and for us, it's been life-changing. But uh, she never blinks, she never wavers, and never. And one thing that she says to me when things get difficult is take a deep breath, be calm, and get it done. <laughs> Let's, let's, let's talk about this for a minute. You know, one of the things that um, uh, I thought about the things that I want to share with you guys with respect to this exhibition. The first thing is, is that this is really a sampling. I photographed Sarasota uh, for over four years. 
and um, uh, and I'm excessive. You know, I get up when you when you take on a project like this, it becomes part of your family life. You know, we're up at dawn, uh, we're chasing the light. Uh, you're photographing. You're trying to feel the place and really experience the energy of the place. And for us. Sarasota is the culmination of a seven-year journey that my wife and I spent trying to decide where we would go when we left Maryland. And so she found Sarasota. We are here because she found it. She said, let's go check out Sarasota. And um, so it's, it's, it's really akin to, to meeting a new lover, right? You, you, you're, you're tentative. You find a place. You find something that you love, but you're tentative. You don't really know if that lover will accept you, if it will embrace you. And, and doing a project like that is somewhat similar to that. This is the first time that we have lived in the Deep South. She's from Chicago. I grew up in Gary, Indiana. And we lived in, in the mid-Atlantic region in Maryland for a long time. But our roots run to the Midwest. Beyond that, our roots run to the South. Her family's from Louisiana. I was born in Arkansas. And so we have those uh, stories, those narratives that make up our life. And you bring, obviously, those things with you wherever you go. And when you arrive at a place like Sarasota, there is a certain amount of trepidation because you come with the narratives of life in the South, as it was and as it is. And you really don't know. I would say that, that among the many places that we've explored, and we've been many, many places, Sarasota is unlike any other place. And that was part of the reason for coming. Most of the people that I know are not from Sarasota. They are from somewhere else, and they bring that energy to Sarasota and their ideas to Sarasota. And we commiserate. We have sympathetic relationships because we see the world in very similar ways. Some of those ways are idiosyncratic and maybe not necessarily positive with respect to the South and to Sarasota because we bring our narratives with us. And so for me, when I go out in the world, I'm thinking on two levels, and this is part of the, it's sort of organically part of what happens, I think, with most black people in America. You approach what you do as a human being, as a, as a spirit, if you will, having a human experience. And you're very aware of your humanity. But at the same time, because of the stories and the narratives that are embedded in the American experience, you also approach life as an African American to understand the spaces and the environment on that level. And, that, and you have to, you know, we, we, we are trained, we are socialized, certainly my generation, and we imparted that to our son and to our daughter, that you have to be aware of the perils that you might encounter in the world. It is embedded in the African-American experience. Sometimes it is limiting and sometimes not. I would have to tell you that my wife and I go wherever we choose to go, however we choose to go, and we always have. So we didn't, we didn't have to be, we did not, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> we, yeah, we, so we, did, we didn't have to be alerted to being free, if you understand that. And so you take that kind of thinking with you into a project like this. Because in order to be an artist, in order to uh, really recognize the, the, what I call the truisms of an environment, you have to be open and you have to be vulnerable so that you can experience a place on every level without preconceptions. And so that, for me, has been an interesting part of exploring Sarasota. And so it is um, a very, very beautiful place. And what is important to me, what was really important to me in doing this project was not to have a preconceived notion of a southern city and assassinate the character of Sarasota. You know, photography is an interesting thing. <laughs> Photographs represent the thing that you photograph, but you have the double entendre. Photographs are more than that which you see. For certain artists, right? And so if, for example, you come to an exhibition like this with the assumption that you're going to see something done by an African-American artist that is overtly African-American, you're behind the curve. Because we are not monolithic. We see the world as all other artists do in many different ways. So when you look at this exhibition, there are ideas about monochromatic imagery. There are ideas about color. And what's important is not that you necessarily see that, but what you see is something that that triggers or evokes the sensation that you understand this place and this space based on those things. In addition, there are sequential relationships. You have to make images work with each other. I, you know, I was saying to, uh, to Carl and Fred that for me, when I'm sitting printing, when I'm working, and, I, and I've been really lucky, 
guy who lives in California, he's a brilliant photographer, he's very, very busy. He's still, he's got a, you know, daughter. <laughs> but I'm lucky because uh, I can, we can Zoom and we can bounce ideas off of each other. Again, with Joyce, you know, Joyce, we, we've been together for a very long time. She'll look at a picture and go, rocks and water. <laughs> and, 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 and you need that. Right, we need that. So, so what I was what I was saying, what I was saying to Carl and Fred is that when I'm working, when I'm photographing, when I'm talking to my colleagues, when I'm sitting by myself in my office printing, for me, it's like writing music. I'm trying to create a, a visual rhythm. You know, when you listen to like like they were playing uh, "Kind of Blue," which is one of my favorite songs ever, and, and you know, there are people like Dee Dee Bridgewater sings that tune, and it just reaches into your soul. Right, and so for me, when I when I'm printing and I'm working on ideas and images, sometimes I really can't articulate what I'm trying to do because I liken it to music. All the notes are in front of me. I understand the scale. I understand where I want to inject the blues or where I want it to be classic jazz. I understand where there needs to be a space, and it has to be an organic understanding. If it's preconceived, if it's if it's in any way uh, not organic, it doesn't work for me. So you're working with these ideas and you're putting these pieces together and that motivates what you're trying to do when you go back out to photograph the next time and the next time. I'm lucky that I'm a professor because I work with students who are all born in the 21st century. They're younger than my youngest. And so I look at the work they do, I listen to their ideas, I teach classes that are about ideas, about the meaning of photographs, the meaning of art, the meaning of music. You know, Fred comes and speaks to my classes and what he does is that he imparts the concept of understanding meaning and spirituality through musical language. Photography is like that. You know, how is it that you can go to Siesta Key on a particular day and it's absolutely gorgeous, it's amazing, but then there's red tide, right? Or you go to Siesta Key on a Sunday and you look at the drummers and you look at all of that and you see that there is this sort of organic thing and yet there are certain kinds of aspects of that where you, you know, there are people who shouldn't be nearly undressed, prancing around. <laughs> right? So how do you deal with that? Uh, um, so, 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 you know, for me, what I'm trying to do is to create an experience and a journey that is organically unique to my experience of Sarasota. It's analytical, uh, uh, it is objective, but, but ultimately, as is the case with all art, photography is certainly, it's certainly true for photography, objectivity is an intellectual construct. What lens you choose, where you choose to stand, how you choose to photograph something, everything is subjective. And what you have to be as an artist, what you're responsible for is understanding that you know, subjectivity and, and manipulating that in such a way that you get to make a statement. And you have to be conscious of it. It's not egocentric. It's being open, it's being vulnerable so that you can experience a place over and over and over again. It changes with the light, it changes with the season. It changes based on the news. You know, when, 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 you, when you listen to the news and you hear about the various things that are our reality, they're not necessarily Sarasota realities. Like I consider myself a Sarasota, right? As opposed to a Floridian, right? Because I'm always gonna be from Gary, Indiana. Like that's part of my narrative. I'm never going to relinquish that, right? So for me, you know, I'm, I'm experiencing things and, and, you know, there are things that come up during the course of living that make me angry. There are things that I experience in Sarasota that make me angry, or they disappoint me. I'm disappointed by the things that human beings do, by people not being civil or not being polite. How do you translate that energy into a photograph? And as I said, it's incumbent upon me as an artist to not assassinate the character of a place because Sarasota is beautiful. The bay is beautiful. I go down and I'm walking and I'm just in rapture. If you're ever down, you know, at, by the Van Wessel at sunrise and you see the dolphins and you feel the air and you smell the air, there are few things in life as beautiful as that. I live in Lakewood Ranch. I'm very, very fortunate. I have a very nice house. I, you know, I live in a pond, I get up in the morning, I go up, and I feel blessed and I'm grateful. I ride my bicycle frequently. Some pictures here are made when I'm out riding my bike. And I have those solitary moments where I'm experiencing Sarasota. And I realize how lucky, how fortunate I am to live in such a beautiful
beautiful place. You know, I would say that in, in my time in Sarasota, I have never had anyone say or do anything to me that was overtly disrespectful. I attribute that to gray hair, right? <laughs> when, when in Maryland, people won't stop you. But in Sarasota, people will stop if you're crossing the street, you have your groceries or whatever, they'll wave you through. There is a sort of a, an etiquette of human behavior, and I appreciate that. Now, there are other things. There is always, in the midst of all this beauty, the amazing building. I have never, ever lived anywhere where building has happened, has sprung up like it has in Sarasota. And with that, there are issues, there are problems. But this, this project is not about that. This project is about my experience of this thing, right? And so, one of the things that I, that I recognize is that there are certain unique things about Sarasota, the, 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 the textures, and there are certain things that are organically true for Sarasota that disturb me, right? I mean, you know, there is a black community that exists on the periphery of Sarasota. And so when you're walking the streets of Sarasota, you go, well, where are my people, right? Because I don't ever disassociate myself from that from which I come. But by the same token, I don't isolate myself. Right? I'm all about experiencing everything that life has to offer. So I don't believe in isolationism. So, so my point is, is that you carry all of these things with you when you go out to photograph. Because you are trying to create an experience that is true to what you feel on a spiritual level, on an emotional level, on an organic level. And I've been a photographer a long time. I was a view camera photographer for over 30 years. I carried 30, 35 pounds of gear on my back. I carried four different kinds of film. I've spent my life doing this. And so I know, theoretically, when that picture should be in color. I know, theoretically, when that picture should be in black and white. Because I've been doing it for a very long time. Right? And so, and I've taught this. I've said, you know, as I said, like a lover, know what has seduced you. Know what has seduced you. Then you can enjoy the experience. Right? So, so that's what this is about. It's feeling the light. It's seeing certain kinds of things. There are things that disturb me, and they're complicated things. You know, we can talk about guns. We can talk about you know, the proliferation of, of shops that offer different kinds of experiences. It's complicated. Life is complicated. It's complicated for me. It's complicated for you. And I'm aware of that complication, right? And I have to navigate it and, and negotiate it as an individual person, as an artist. So when you look at images, I'm appreciating Sarasota, but frequently the image is of the thing I photograph, but I want you to think about what it might represent. And what's important to me is not to tell you what I specifically think. What's important is for, tell me, for you to tell me what you get, right? Because a photograph, I think, or a piece of art well done, leaves space for people to decide for themselves what it means. I'm not trying to direct you down a tunnel. I'm saying, this is the world Expe the, that I experience. Experience it. Share it with me and tell me what you feel. Right? So, of course, I'm looking at color. I'm looking at black and white. I'm looking at gun shops. And I'm raising questions that you have to answer for yourself. I can tell you how I feel about it, but it's complicated. Right? Am I on this side or that side? It's complicated. Like we know in real life. You know, uh, so 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 I think that 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 when you look, you know, the architecture is brilliant. I love it in Sarasota, but there are things that bother me. Why don't we preserve things more in Sarasota? Things that are important. We have the finest architects in the world. So why can't they see that we need to preserve architecture in Sarasota? We can do things with it that are unexpected, like the Colson Hotel. You know, I look at the Colson Hotel for Negroes, which was the last segregated hotel left in Syria. And it's hard, it's dilapidated, it's falling apart. And I think to myself, my God, what could an architect do if they took the facade and preserved it and built something magnificent thing behind that? So people could come in, they could experience it, and yet there would be this other thing. So they could be reminded at the same time they get to experience something new. You know, my dear friend Tony Sousa gave me an opportunity to go uh, to the Bell Haven. And I was amazed at the beauty of what had been done in that space. So we know, we have the proof 
that if the people that we believe in, if the architects that we have here decide to build and improve one thing, they can build and improve another. We have the ability. Here's the thing. When you feel like you are a part of the community, when you want being a part of that community to be an organic part of your life and your existence, then you realize you have to participate in that community in some way, shape, or form. Right? And so for me, I get to do that. I, I, I'm with WSLR, I have a radio show on Wednesdays. I get to play jazz and talk to people, and I can share that energy with Sarasota. That's part of the thing that I'm obligated to do and bring to this community, because this is where I live. Right? And so I so my point is is that, you know, I think I look at things and I think, why can't we? And the thing is, is that I feel very, very strongly that there should be one place, not necessarily in Florida, but there should be one place that is the finest place in the world. Why can't it be here? Why can't, and I'm not, I'm a lot of things, but naive is not one of them, <laughs> right? But we have the resources, we have the skill, we have the talent, we have the organic energy. We can bring energy to bear in this place for there to be one place, one bastion of civility, decency and integrity in the state of Florida, in this country, where everything can be worked out. But we have to want that, and we have to show that we want that by what we do, by the energy we bring, by our behaviors toward each other, by the things that we do politically. That's what I'm talking about. Why can't we? Why can't we have one place? And so I think that's something that's worth fighting for as an artist, as a human being, as an individual. So this is all about that. You know, um, uh, my dear friends, Bonnie and Ed, I think it's maybe the first time we went anywhere with them. We, they, we went to a protest, right? And the thing is, is that we need a world and an environment where people are treated with decency. We need to work out our problems. We don't need hate literature distributed in anybody's neighborhood at any time for any reason. There's something wrong with that, right? So we go, we go to a protest. And I get to have an opportunity to make photographs, right? So my wife and I, we have terrible allergies. We moved here partly because of Siesta Key. There's nothing wrong with Longboat. There's nothing wrong. Siesta Key is 28 minutes from the big chair in my living room. <laughs> okay? And so we moved here because for me, as somebody that grew up in Gary, Indiana, standing at the Gulf of Mexico is magical. That never, cha it never changes for me. Gary, Indiana, we have Lake Michigan. When I stand at the Gulf of Mexico, I'm elevated to something that I carried in my heart as a child. It's magical, you know? So, so these are the things that I celebrate, but if I go to Siesta Key and I can't breathe, my eyes are tearing, I can't walk out on the beach, I'm afraid of the water, the fish are dying, there's something wrong with that. We have all these brilliant minds, we need to fix that. That's how I feel about it, we need to fix that, right? Um, when I'm walking, have you ever like have you ever been to the zoo and you're looking at the animal in the cage and you say to yourself, what does the animal in the cage look at when they're looking back at me? You ever ask yourself that? So I ask myself that, not that I liken to myself necessarily as an animal in the cage because I was born free and I live free. But when I'm walking in Sarasota, when I'm walking on the streets of Sarasota and I'm photographing, there is this other thing that hangs in the air. And it's that other thing that we need to be conscious of too, right? And so ask yourself sometimes when you're looking at people, what do they see when they look back at you, right? And if you think about that, that might change how you look at them, right? You feel me? So, so, so there are images where I'm looking at people and they're looking at me and that exchange says something. And so, you know, Guy and I were talking about that photographically. What does that mean exactly? And so for me, I want you to see what I saw. I want you to feel what I felt. And so there are things in Sarasota that we need to acknowledge. As civil as Sarasota has been to me, you know, it's an honor for me to teach at Ringling. It's always been an honor for me to have a chance to stand in front of people and teach. My parents were teachers, my grandparents were teachers, us and all, teachers, right? I come from a school teaching family. Thank God my kids are not gonna do that. <laughs> right? but, but my point is this, that it's important
for us to share our experiences, not so we can talk about where we are today, not so we can make anybody feel bad, but so that we as a civilization can get from here to here. To me, that's our responsibility. So I'm gonna share those things. I'm gonna share what it feels like to be lonely. Photograph that, though, the pictures back in that corner, uh, especially the large one, that's me on a bicycle alone. Right? He's looking at me because I think I was there. But. She thinks she was there, right? <laughs> but what does it feel like? You know, remember, remember when COVID hit? Yeah. Remember? Yeah. And all of a sudden, people are like, remember the AIDS epidemic? Be like, don't touch me, I can't hug you. Right? Some of us lost good friends. Some of us lost good friends with COVID. We lost people that we love. Everybody was scared to death. Right? So, so I mean, you know, it's all like you go down to the bay, there's nothing wrong with having money. Let me say that again. There's nothing wrong with having money. So I don't go to the bay and think, ah, that's bad. I go to the bay and say, wow, that's amazing. So I'm going to photograph that because I love the fact that it's here. I don't have a yacht, but I'm not a boat guy, right? But I don't knock the people that have it. They didn't take my money, right? So, 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 you know, uh, 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 the, the old, like, like, uh, you know, there are old things in Sarasota that are amazing to me. Then there are other things that, for me, represent, you know, pride of the South. What does that mean? It means a lot of things. It just depends on how you look at it. It's what you bring to the table, right? And I'm not responsible for what you bring to the table. I'm sharing with you what I got. You know, so, 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 I just think that uh, I have to. Tell you, I, I don't see Mars and Aunt, Annie Simmons. Annie is, she's a really, really, really wonderful person. She's been so good to me. She was my mentor when I first started at WSLR. She's an amazing lady. So she told me about a place that her husband's been in her husband's family for, for generations, right, for decades. She took me to that place and I'm like, wow, right? So it, it made me feel about a piece of the South that was just so organically the South, right? So I was able to juxtapose that with another photograph that's literally across from the Florida Studio Theater that made me feel about the, the, the organic majesty and beauty of the South. So I could juxtapose those things. So, so let me check the time because I'm a professor. I can talk forever. <laughs> All right, I got seven minutes. Uh, no, one has, no, no one has ever to accuse me of not talking enough. <laughs> right, baby? <laughs> So, I, you know, it, 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 I just, you know, I, I, I had, uh, this is a, a small sampling of this project. There are more files than you can imagine. This project is, is morphing into a book. I'm at that point, we're working on it. Uh, we're looking uh, for book designer, lots of things. I, I did a couple of bookmaking workshops uh, as I was doing this. And, and one of the last bits of advice, a very, 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 uh, highly placed author told me is that an exhibition is one thing and a book is something else. Don't be confused. And so this is the ex this is at least an initial exhibition, but the book is coming. Uh, many more photographs, much more complex, much more sequencing. Uh, we're working on that. We, we don't really have a time frame. Uh, my wife tells me when I'm driving down the street, pay attention. You're thinking about your book. <laughs> you know, pay attention. Did you see that car? I'm like, car. <laughs> so, so, so look at the images, hopefully enjoy them. Uh, they certainly are representative of what they are. I mean, you could ride down Tuttle and there's a tank. I mean, you said, my God, how did a tank, and it's not the only tank in Sarah, you know, there are cannons, right? And, and literally across from there is the, girl, the girls' academy. So, you know, there's cool stuff happening. Um, I can see, you know, recycle the, the, the recyclables where I live are not like the recyclables in a lot of other places. You know, and I'm, I'm riding on my bike and, and I'm like, whoa, look at that. Get that picture, right? Uh, uh, I love downtown. Absolutely love downtown. I'm amazed by it. I love it. I can actually park my car. The scale of it works for me. Uh, as I said, you know, Siesta Key. This is a photograph that, that actually I, I went to the space. It's across from the Colson Hotel. <coughs> I had never seen, but 
but I'm a huge fan. You know, my daughter's name is Isis. My son's name is Aman. <clears throat> so Egyptian mythology is embedded in our family culture, in our ideas. So I see that, and I'm like, and, and my constant companion is in the car with, her, you know, reading, reading, or she's got her phone or whatever. And I'm like, I, I got to make one more picture, honey. And I and I'm able to make that image. So, so I'm, I'm very very pleased that you're here. Uh, you cannot imagine how important it is for any artist to have people come and see what they're doing, enjoy it, uh, uh, take it take you know take it to heart. You know, uh, uh, heart and soul is what's on the walls, mm -hmm. and it's it's honest and it's genuine. Uh, it, this is this is what I do from from the core of my soul. This is what I do, and uh, it's an exploration. And I just hope that you would enjoy it and uh, it hopefully would trigger some thoughts and, and make you think, you know, what do you do with those thoughts? Think about when you're, when you're out in the world and you're walking, you're at the grocery store, you're at the market. Think about what you're projecting on other people, how you're making them feel, not by what you say, but by the energy that you project. As, as, as spirits having a human experience, we can feel what you're projecting, whether you say something or not. We can feel you. We know what's happening. We know where you're coming from. That's all of us. It's not a black-white thing. It's a human thing. Just keep that in mind. And we feel each other. So project feelings that you want to have projected on you. You know, I live by a really simple rule. Treat people the way you want to be treated. It works 99% of the time. It's not complex. It doesn't require a lot of conversation. It's not intellectual. Just treat people the way you want to be treated. It works. You know, so this is my offering to you. Yes, sir. Quick, right, maybe you said it already, the title of yeah. the show, Looking for Home. What does that mean? It means literally that, 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 that for me, I am looking for a place. that I, Home is more than having a house somewhere. Home is a place that you can embrace like a lover. Right. I mean, really, home is and I and I was uprooted as a child when I was in the middle of my junior year in high school. We moved from Gary, Indiana to Silver Spring, Maryland. That was a very long time ago. And so as someone that was uprooted at that time, I have spent the rest of my life looking to plant that tap, looking to go. I'm going to sink it right here. And that's what I'm looking at Sarasota to determine. Is this the place I'm with this woman? My life cannot exist without her. And so the question is, can we sink that root here? And what I need is a place that's populated with honesty and decency and integrity and people that I can love, right? I, I got to love the people that I interact with. And so that's what this is about. So yeah, so I'm looking. And, 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 I'm, and you know what? I'm not absolutely sure. But I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it every fair opportunity, because, like I said, we didn't come here haphazardly. We didn't just show up here. We invested seven years and a great deal of money to determine where it is that we wanted to be. She picked it, and when she says this is what time it is, I'm lining up. <laughs> Are there, are there any questions that I can answer? So let, let me say this. It's a great joy and a pleasure to be here with you. I want to take questions, entertain all the questions that I can. My students are expecting me to be online at a quarter to eight. Oh, okay. And so I, I am still Professor Jones. And so I, have, I, I canceled a class for the opening and I delayed a class. This is midterms, and so I need to give them their assignments so they can do their midterms. So I'm here, and I'm, I'm not in a rush, but I don't want you to think I'm being rude, but, you know, I have a class at, at, at 7 o'clock. <laughs> I think you should talk about how this wasn't the original title of the show. It was okay, the so, okay. The original so the original title of the show was Finding Home. And, mm -hmm. and uh, again, I, you know, we, we have intellectual conversations that my wife was an attorney. She was born to be a lawyer. So, you know, it's sometimes it's deep. You're, you're like, what? You know? Um, so, so we had this whole discussion about finding home. 
And so um, it, it, was, it was an issue. My wife, in a conversation, pointed out to me that maybe we haven't found it. And ironically, it came at a time when I was doing a workshop. Again, very, very, Ringling has supported this. I was doing a workshop with two of the greatest, I think, book, two of the greatest thinkers in the world, uh, Mary Virginia Swanson and Darius Hines. And Joyce brought the question up. And ironically, on the same day, I had been in a, a, a very long workshop online with uh, Swanee and Darius. And he had said, maybe this is looking for home. In, in the conversation, because I, Paul, I would tell you that it would be easy for me to tell you, yeah, this is it, and that would not be true. Uh, so, so, but, but, but Joyce, she took the nail. She said, "Are you still looking?" And I'm like, "Yeah, baby, we're still looking," <laughs> because we're not sure. But, but, but we're here. You know, we got we got roots here. And we're here. So, yeah. Great question. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Would you comment on two forty two? Would you comment on two forty two? Yes, I can. So, um, first of all, it's a very interesting structure. It's on Fruitville, and I pass it all the time. It was something else before they, they it was a, uh, a bail bondsman's place. Okay, so I come down, and I see this sort of resplendent wall. Now, in Sarasota, we have a situation, right? And that situation is that there are uh, layers of acceptance in Sarasota. So how do you talk about that? And when, you, and when I listen to people that have been in Sarasota for a long time, I talk to people that are trying to do things in Sarasota, largely black people, but not exclusively, black and brown people, there are issues that black and brown people have to confront in Sarasota. Like, and it's not unique to Sarasota, let me say that. These are the issues that black and brown people have to confront in America. I've been outside of the country. Black and brown people confront these issues in other countries. Florida has its own unique spin on that. And Sarasota has its own unique spin on that. So for me, I feel that there are barriers. There is no absolute barrier. I studied with one of the greatest living documentary style photographers in American history. And one of the things that I learned, he used to say to me, Brian, sometimes you have to shout and sometimes you have to whisper. And you have to know when and how to do that. There's no formula for that. And so for me, I wanted to create an image organically that represented my feeling about lack of opportunity, lack of access. What are the problems in Sarasota? I can feel them. I'm different because I had a career. I was a professor. I retired as Professor Emeritus, right? And I'm really, really fortunate. But there are barriers in Sarasota. And how do you represent that? And so that's what that photograph ultimately is about. There are white walls in Sarasota, like there are glass ceilings in, in, in this world. And if we don't recognize it, we can't knock them down. Yeah, good question. Other questions that I can answer? Yes, ma'am. I, I came to Sarasota in 98. Wow. Did somebody say wow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the first thing, you know, my parents, my father was losing his memory, but the first thing they wanted to do was to go to the beach to see the sunset. And Sarasota, when friends come down, well, what would you like to do? Well, let's go see the sunset. Yet I see not one sunset in any of your pictures. So, so I would say to you about. So there was a photograph that we that I brought in. I brought sixty-one images. There are fifty images on the wall, and so. Uh, in, in putting together an exhibition, you have to listen to the advice of the director of exhibitions because someone who is objective has to look at what you brought and they have to tell you what's, what works best. And I'm lucky that I had that person because when I came through the door, I did what I've done for 40 years. I said, they'll all fit. <laughs> <laughs> they'll all fit. And she was very kind to me. <laughs> and she looked at me and she said, and the very first day, she said, well, I don't know. <laughs> and that's all she said, I don't know. And she's very diplomatic. She's an artist, but she has a position. And so when I felt that from her, the first thing that was incumbent upon me was to respect her position because that's her job. So there was a photograph of a sunset at Siesta Key that was, I think, 13 by 19. 
And as we edited, and we edited, what, over three days or something, I would, I would bring this up and I'd leave and I'd come back. And, and one time I came back, she had put little pink stickers on everything. I thought, well, that's not us. <laughs> <laughs> but that particular image that was brought was taken out because it did not work for what we were trying to accomplish. Some of that was space, and some of that was to say, what are the strongest pictures that you have brought? And, and, and you know, I've, I've learned, you know, I have learned the hard way to listen. It, 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 one of the things that the hardest lesson for me to learn as a husband, the hardest lesson for me to learn as a professor was to listen. And when Christina said what she said, I listened to her because I knew I didn't have to be defensive because I knew that Christina had my, had my best interest at heart. She wasn't trying to take anything from me. She was trying to help me. So we took that picture down. And that's, so that picture is hanging in my house right now. As I said before, there will be a book. And in that book, there will be a lot of pictures that you're going to see here. So that's the deal. And it's a gorgeous sunset. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, they, you know, I, I, I'm a guy that has never been accused of not having enough pictures. I've done huge you know, exhibitions. It's, it's not that not having enough, but sometimes the most comforting place to be is on that beach at sunset. Listen, I am totally with you. I am totally with you. But as I said, you have to. Sometimes you have to listen to somebody. They're not as close to it as you are. They're looking at this and they're going, "What works and what doesn't." You know, it's like you could be playing something and you hit a sour note. And it's not dissonance, it's just a bad note. And it's a great photograph. It'll be in the book, but it's not in this particular exhibition. That's just how that works. <laughs> <laughs> other 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 questions. It's a great it's a great question. Yeah. Other things that I can answer. Yes. You're you're infrared. Yes. You have a uh Camera? I have a camera that was converted to infrared. Um, I came here, I, I, I go back to the days of sheet film. I shot infrared 4x5 film and processed it. I had a very large, very, very, very uh, complete dark room. Uh, so I came here with a camera, uh, but it wasn't, the quality of the images was not great enough for me. <coughs> so I had one of my Nikons converted to infrared. And, and, and uh, as I said, I, I spent so many years with, with, with sheet film and a view camera. Uh, and so uh, it gives me a different level of perception. And, and you have to learn to work with it. Uh, and so I had the camera converted. I had the camera con calibrated to a single lens. And so I've developed a, a way of seeing that, that really worked. When I go out to photograph, you know, I think... 35, 135, 85. I, I mean, I'm really, I, and again, I, I just, it's, it's practice, you know. And so, uh, yeah, so, so there are pictures. There are no uh, organic, I say black and white. There are no color files here that were converted to black and white. Every photograph that you identify as a black and white photograph was done with an infrared camera. So it only sees in that end of the spectrum. And so then you have to learn how to work with it and manipulate it not necessarily to get the picture right, but to make the statement that you want to make. And so I, I, I never saved any time. I mean, I've stood in dark rooms more, more hours than I can remember. Now I sit in front of a computer. So I'm not saving any time, but I'm sitting there. I have a very, very constructive workflow. So, so yes, sir. Where will your files go? <laughs> so uh, I, I've been very, very fortunate. Uh, uh, UMBC created the Brian Jones Collection probably 15 years ago. Uh, my work is collected by the American Art, by the Smithsonian American Art Museum. Um, I'm hoping that the creator gives me a, a little more time because I would hate to go now because the amount of files that I have need to be really, really well organized. They're, they're pretty well organized. But one of the things I've learned painfully is that those files will go to my children. And my children need to know what to do with them. They're not photographers. And so... Um, those files will be precisely organized and they'll be designated, you know, hopefully before my time comes. Uh, the body of work that I have, I spent over 40 years shooting film. So I got a lot of negatives. And I started, for, I specialize in photographing jazz musicians, uh, a lot of jazz musicians. 
Uh, I started as a photojournalist. And so, uh, you know, the, the bodies of work that I have are uh, daunting. But eventually, they'll wind up in some uh, museums and college collections. But I'll, I'll talk with my offspring about that. So they know how to do it. I, I've seen travesties with photographers where their pictures wind up in shoe boxes in the closet. That's not going to happen. Yeah, that's not going to happen. You know, it, it very, very clear and specific direction so that my students, understand, my, my kids know what to do with, with, with their father's work. Christina, time for you to be quiet. No, um, actually, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about 242. Yeah, well, we, we, we talked about it. Um, the one thing I would say about it, if you really, you know, just to understand, as I said, life is complex. Look at the nuances in tone and texture. Life is complex. So how people are ostracized, how people are uh, uh, dissuaded is never simply overt. It's always in the subtleties. The devil is always in the details. And so, you know, as a printer, you know, I want to make an image that gives you that, all of those nuances. And so not only is it representative of something, but it also has to be, from my perspective, as exquisite a photograph as I can possibly make. It's a very bold composition. Well, thank you. You know, I, 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 my good friend and I talk about this all the time. You know, I, I, sit, at, I sit at my printer, I sit at my desk, and, and, and I want to create the most exquisite image I possibly can create. I mean, I'm trying to get every ounce of information revealed so that you can get every ounce of information revealed. I want you to have an image. It's like, it's like falling in love. Nobody wants part of a lover. You want all, right? You want the full experience. And that's what I'm trying to do. So, One of the things I like about that image is the missing five. Yeah, well, that, you know, that is the address. Yeah. And, 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 and for me, I drive by it all the time. And it took me a while. At first, when, they, when that was a bail bondsman's place, they had like some... So I've, I've done projects where I photographed uh, environmental art, and then you have to deal with making it your own. And then when it was bought, I think by a realty, I actually photographed the front of it first. But I drive by there all the time. And so and early in the, all times of day, you know, it, it, especially I'm, going, I'm coming down to the station. But, um, and then one day it just hit me. You know, and it's right across from Sarasota Lanes. It's, there, all that stuff is in there together. But, but for me, you know, it partly, it's just an amazing white wall. Under amazing light. I love the light in Sarasota. Absolutely love the light in Sarasota. But it's also about something else. Other 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 questions that I can I, again how how am I doing? Oh okay, I got we get listen, we got like you know a few more minutes if you have other questions, otherwise I'll shut up and you can enjoy the pictures. <laughs> All right. All right, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much.